Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The outcome of World War I made it clear that aviation technology significantly impacted how the war turned out. The Allied forces' perception that they needed to control the airspace in order to gain a tactical advantage on the battlefield was greatly influenced by the conclusion of World War II. A significant advantage was provided by the ability to quickly deploy soldiers on the front lines and withdraw them with few casualties. As a result, the oldest type of VTOL aircraft in existence, helicopters, were subsequently used as transport vehicles. In contrast to vertical takeoff and landing, VTOL, Short takeoff and vertical landing, STOVL, refer to the capability of an aircraft to take off from a short runway or small aircraft carrier and land vertically. In VTOL, aircraft do not even require runways at all. For an aircraft to be able to have STOVL, it needs to be able to hover, such as a helicopter. The hover procedure is where the helicopter stays in one place in the air without moving forward or backward. The STOVL propulsion systems provide the airplane with vertical and conventional forward flight capability. This design came into life in the 1960s. With NATO formally describing STOVL in 1991 as the ability of a fixed-wing aircraft to clear a 15-meter obstacle with 450 meters of commencing takeoff run and capable of landing vertically. The AV-8B is one of the most versatile aircraft that exhibits STOVL. And until the F-35B, it was the only STOVL aircraft in the U.S. military. The AV-8B is technically a VTOL aircraft with its ability to take off and land vertically and is also used in an STOVL mode when taking off as it can carry more ordnance. It uses an enormous amount of thrust to hover like a helicopter, then zooms out of range of enemy fire exceptionally quickly. It has a rich history, which started in January of 1985. That's when the U.S. Marine Corps achieved an initial capability with the 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing. This jet has been in use for decades and continues to demonstrate its lethality and endurance, and it has served in several operations that required air support. More recently, the F-35B jet has been found to have superior technological advancements to the AV-8B. It can also provide long-range supersonic speed with its unique stealthy feature and the ability to transport advanced weapons. The F-35 boosts international cooperation. 
improves national security, and propels economic expansion. It is the world's most deadly, resilient, and connected fighter jet, giving pilots a competitive edge over any enemy and enabling them to complete their mission and return home safely. There are three single-seat jet variants in the F-35 family. The F-35 family includes the F-35B short takeoff and vertical landing variant, the F-35C carrier variant, and the F-35A conventional takeoff and landing variant. These three variants share similar performance traits and cutting-edge avionics. Military forces can achieve service-specific mission capability thanks to the differences between models, all while still benefiting from the economies of scale brought about by the parts and procedures that are shared by all three variants. Since it can take off and land on regular runways, the F-35A is the most popular model. The F-35A is flown by the U.S. Air Force and the vast majority of F-35's international allies. The F-35B can take off, land in incredibly close quarters, and land vertically like a helicopter. This enables it to function from various air-capable ships and austere short field bases. Impressively, the United Kingdom, the Italian Air Force, and the United States Marine Corps all fly the F-35B. The F-35C is the first stealth fighter for the Navy, and the only long-range, fifth-generation stealth strike fighter explicitly built for aircraft carrier operations. The Department of the Navy and Marine Corps are the only entity that uses the F-35C. The aircraft is powered by a single F-135 turbofan engine, specifically developed for the F-35 fleet. With 29,000 shaft horsepower directed to the lift fan system beneath the cockpit and wings, the F-35B's vectoring thrust nozzle enables the aircraft to take off from short runways. The F-35 single engine produces 40,000 pounds of vertical thrust. which is directed downward by a swiveling that can rotate 95 degrees in 2.5 seconds using energy from the engine. The efficiency of these F-35 fleets is highly dependent on the working conditions of their engines. 
and it is not surprising that the military continuously trains its personnel with hands-on maintenance training devices, especially on engine maintenance and propulsion. The AV-8B has earlier been stated to be very versatile. And its versatility is premised on the Rolls-Royce Pegasus turbofan engine. The Pegasus has four thrust vectoring exhaust nozzles, two of which are situated on each side of the engine. As opposed to other jet engines, which only have one jet exhaust nozzle. Each nozzle uses a rotating cascade of vanes to direct the thrust from a horizontal direction for fast flight to a vertical direction for hovering and vertical takeoff and landing. The hot jet exhaust is released from the rear nozzles, while the two front nozzles release unheated air that has been compressed by the fan. Indeed, the jet control technique is also a fascinating procedure. When the aircraft is flown as an ordinary airplane, the standard ailerons, rudder, and horizontal tail produce aerodynamic control moments about the roll, yaw, and pitch axis respectively. Reaction jets supply the necessary control moments during hovering and at low forward speeds because aerodynamic controls are ineffective. Both the reaction jets and aerodynamic controls are used during intermediate speeds. The landing gear on the AV-8B is unusual. and was created to prevent contact with the engine and thrust vectoring nozzles. The aircraft is typically inspected in accordance with the established schedule, looking for any abnormalities that may have arisen during the course of the service. A predetermined route map is used to inspect the aircraft's critical components and overall structure, including the throttle and control stick system, thrust and flight direction, gears, engine, wings, etc. Among other things, the hydraulic levels of the systems and the oil in the engine are checked during this process using computerized indicators, as well as occasionally, physically. The maintenance of its turbofan engine is a daunting task that requires several man hours. An experienced crew can take the engine out and back in, test it, and be ready for functional check flight in just about one day. The primary issue is that the entire wing comes off in one piece and is only held by some bolts. Once the engine is removed from its bay, all departments must assess it to perform preventative maintenance based on the number of flight hours accumulated since the last inspection. Once the maintenance is completed and the engine has been reinstalled, it is tested against low power. This verifies all systems are working before taking it to high power. And lastly, getting it ready for FCF. Another VTOL air asset of the US military is the K-MAX helicopter. It is a multi-purpose, medium-lift utility helicopter designed to last in all weather conditions. As a result, the K-MAX supports a single pilot seat and has a single engine, allowing for the lowest possible airframe profile. 
Although it appears to be fragile, it has heavy-duty capabilities, which enable it to carry loads greater than its own listed empty weight. Indeed, the K-Max is a special type of helicopter, which uses an intermeshing rotor system. It has rotors that rotate at opposite angles and in opposite directions to generate lift, all while avoiding one another's rotation. The K-Max's rotor configuration gives it an inherent hovering ability, which makes it easier to control during precise actions. Unlike helicopters that use a single spinning rotor or propeller, the K-Max does not need a traditional tail rotor to offset the torque effect because it uses these intermeshing rotors instead. In comparison to conventional helicopters, it has even been claimed that these types of rotor arrangements have long-term efficiency advantages. Compared to other helicopter systems attempting to fulfill the same role, the K-Max effectively reduces the pilot workload. It's powered by a single Honeywell T53 17 series turboshaft engine, producing about 1,800 shaft horsepower. Its rotor diameter is 48 feet 3 inches, and its airframe runs the length of roughly 51 feet 10 inches. When at rest, it stands 13 feet 7 inches tall, weighs 5,145 pounds, and has a maximum takeoff weight of 12,000 pounds. The K-Max has demonstrated its worth in several capacities, including search and rescue operations, logistics, heavy-duty construction projects, logging, firefighting, and disaster response. It also has an unmanned version with the sole objective of preventing pilots from coming in contact with battlefield injuries or environmental hazardous substances, such as when it is used to test the air quality for the presence of nuclear, biological, and chemical components. With just 82 gallons of fuel consumed per hour, this allows the helicopter to travel at speeds of up to 115 miles per hour and cover a distance of up to 306 miles. The STOVL has revolutionized the landing techniques of military aircraft. And it serves other purposes than the ability to deploy and withdraw soldiers quickly from the battlefield. It is not an understatement that most aircraft fatalities happen during conventional takeoff and landing. This is because the initial climb and the final descent of conventional aircraft are undoubtedly the most dangerous period of flight. And this risk is reduced with the STOVL capability of an aircraft. Overall, the STOVL provides the U.S. military with impeccable speed and efficiency in deploying soldiers and supplies at an optimum level of safety. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.